Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today as I share with you my breast fat transfer journey. Yes, that's right. And something's a little bit different about me today. I never show cleavage in my real life. Well, actually on Amazon, there's some great lingerie, which is like 15 bucks, 10 to 15 bucks. Here's a picture of it there. And that's the only time that I show my cleavage off is when my husband and I have a little romantic time together, but that's a different story. And earlier I shared with you all that when I was dealing with my rheumatoid arthritis, actually it's ankylosing spondylitis and all that journey with all that joint pain that I was dealing with, that I ended up coming to believe that the reason I had joint pains was because I had had breast implants. First, I had silicone implants and within about five years, I was racked with pain all over my body. I got those taken out and I had nothing for a while and my joints felt totally great within about two to three years. I was totally back to normal. And unfortunately, within another couple of years, I thought, well, I look kind of disfigured because I'd had those breast implants taken out. And I thought, well, maybe if I get saline implants and saline implants are salt water implants, I thought maybe I would still be okay and keep the joint pain away. But unfortunately, those saline saltwater implants are encased in silicone. And again, within two years, I really had a lot of joint pain coming back. And so I had those saline implants removed and had them replaced with my own body fat. Yes, that's right. I am so happy to realize that that is an option for you. However, it is not without its drawbacks and I'm going to share every detail of my breast fat transfer journey. And I did want you to see that I do have some cleavage here, but I'm going to be moving in in a moment because this is kind of a personal journey and I want to get up close and personal with you and really explain every detail about the breast fat transfer procedure. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging and little extras like breast fat transfer, you never know what you'll see here, but I hope you'll subscribe. And when you click that little bell, that just sends you email notifications of my future videos. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome too. Okay, let's get down to this. Now in April of 2015, and it's April of 2019 now, about four years ago, I had a breast fat transfer procedure, as I mentioned, to replace my saline implants with my own body fat. And I will tell you all details of that here, and I'll be showing you pictures, and they're a little bit graphic, although I do have the prominent part, shall we say, blacked out. So, you know, if that offends you, please don't stick around. But I did want to show you how my body looked so that if you're considering having this procedure done, you will really know what it actually looks like in all its kind of blood spotted, bruised glory. And I want to start by saying that I'm not going to be sharing with anyone the doctor that performed my breast fat transplant because although he did do a beautiful job of creating the breast, I think he injected too much fat and I got some lumps in my breast, but I've been to doctors since then and they say there are no medical problems, so just leave them alone. And because I think he did overfill my breasts, I don't want to steer any of you to go to him. And I will put a link to realself.com to the breast fat transfer review section. And in that section, you can see probably a hundred women who've gone through the same procedure and they talk about the doctors they used and all the ins and outs of the procedures. So I hope you will do your own research there if you think you might want to have this procedure. And I will start out by saying that having a breast fat transfer won't take you from a size A cup to a D cup. It just can't work like that. Basically the fat that they inject in your breasts, they harvest from other parts of your body through liposuction. And what they say is that to be safe and to not get the breast lumps, as I did get a couple of breast lumps, but to be safe and not get those lumps, you really can only go up one size. And if you want to have multiple fat transfers, you can go from an A to a B cup in one operation. And then you would have a second procedure after the first healed, going from a B cup to a C cup, but you really should not go from an A to a C, which is what I did. Basically what happens is that if the doctor injects too much fat, all of that fat can't find an adequate blood supply and some of it dies off. They call it necrosing. And it is not medically a problem, but it does create some kind of hard calcified lumps, I think they're called. And they're, they're not all that comfortable when you lay on them. When I'm just going through my daily life, I never even notice them. But if I lay on my tummy, I can kind of feel them. But I have since been to another plastic surgeon to see about getting those lumps out. I have one in one breast and one in the other. And they're just maybe about that size. But the doctor said, no, don't take them out because you would look kind of disfigured. 
and you know just kind of leave them alone so those lumps are not a medical difficulty but i would recommend that you don't go to a doctor that will take you up too much in size just one size is the rule okay let's get down to this and this is me four years ago in april the morning of the surgery and there i am in my little sweat workout outfit about ready to go to the surgeon's office and have the procedure and in the procedure they totally put you under and i think it lasted maybe two to three hours and here i am at the hotel maybe the afternoon of the surgery and as you can tell i have the area bandaged on top and if you can see the little bulbs that are hanging off those are actually drains and you can see them on either side of my body and the close-up picture there and basically what you have to do is over the first couple of two days i think it was you just have to pour those little drains out because they're collecting body fluids a little bit of blood and just a little bit of clear fluid i didn't have much of it and everything went great but you do have to take care of that so it is helpful to have a partner with you when you go through the procedure and i will tell you that you do have lipo to harvest the fat and so it's kind of a twofer you can you know have lipo on your belly or your back or your legs or all of the above and that's what the doctor did for me and i will say that before i had the procedure since he was in a different state i did a telephone skype with him and i had to show him my body and he said beth i'm worried that we won't have enough fat to transfer because i am kind of a thin person but after the procedure he said beth i got in there and i realized you had plenty of fat so i guess i am fatter than i look so anyway here is a look at after the surgery to where you can see the liposuction areas and the liposuction marks here they are in that first picture as you can see he is drawn all over me and i guess he kind of gave me a drawn on six pack but as you can see i've got some bruising there and then on my back you can really see the lipo marks and they look a little scary those are all those little red marks and they actually fade away to about nothing but there they are on my back and then you can see the bruising on my lower legs there and i had the surgery and about three days later i flew back home to wichita i had one more consult before i left and the doctor said everything looked just great and when i got back home i started the healing process and really the liposuction does not hurt at least that was my experience i looked a lot worse than i felt and here is a look at the lipoed areas once i got back home and here I am, and as you can see, I've got some bleeding and some bruising under the skin there, but it does not hurt. A little bit over the breast, I've also got some bruising up there and in my legs. And two to three days after the procedure, you can really just start going about your normal business, but you do have to wear a compression stocking over all the lipoed areas. And here is a look at the little stocking that you have to wear. And it really feels just like a girdle it firms you in it holds you in and it helps those lipoed areas start to smooth back and have more normal contours now in conclusion let me give you a couple of thoughts i have about the breast fat transfer procedure first i've had problems with the silicone i really don't believe that injecting plastic implants into your body is very healthy and i had a terrible reaction to it and although the doctors say oh the studies don't prove that in my case i know those implants cause me major problems and it just makes sense that if you're basically going to put plastic small beach balls in your body that you know your body could not like that silicone or that plastic and could have a reaction so in my way of thinking if you want to increase the size of your breast it's a lot healthier idea to use your own body fat to build your own breasts i really like the safety aspect of it and they feel very natural they don't get the hard kind of capsule like feeling that some implants can get they feel very very natural because it's again just your own body fat which breasts are made up of a lot of body fat and i would again remind you that you really shouldn't go up more than one cup size to avoid those little knots that you can get in your breasts and the cost for the complete procedure including removing the old implants and injecting the fat in my breasts was i think about six thousand dollars which i think was pretty reasonable and if you have questions about any aspect of this procedure of course i'm not a doctor or a nurse and i suggest you go to a plastic surgeon and ask them but if it's something i can answer go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below and i'll be glad to answer any questions i can okay i always like to leave you with a little thought for the day and i've been using these language of letting go cards by melody Beatty. okay let's choose a card here it is achieving clarity in my relationship achieving clarity in my relationship i don't know what this means but we'll go for it today i will remember that even the best relationships have low points if the low point is the norm in my current relationship i may have to consider if i want to continue it if the low point is temporary i will practice understanding 
I know that I will achieve clarity and make the right decision. Oh friends, I absolutely love this card and I thought about it this week with regard to my sister. As you know, we have a business together and sometimes sisters can really butt heads and we really did that this week. She had been on vacation and I had taken some actions and I guess she thought I shouldn't have done it in her absence or whatever, but I thought she would be glad and it was this big, huge misunderstanding. And I really got down and depressed about it because she is my sister and I do love her, but it was just like, it just killed me. It just made me depressed. And I really did spend a lot of time evaluating our relationship and I had to ask myself, is that the norm in a relationship that I always feel kind of lousy or is that the exception? And I realized after a few days of being mad that it really was the exception and that most of the time we get along pretty well. And so friends, just for today, let's take a little time to evaluate our relationships and get some clarity. And if a given relationship takes more than it gives us, if it makes us feel abused and angry and hurt all the time, and maybe like we're about that tall, then maybe we should reevaluate that relationship to determine if it should really have a place in our life. Take care. See you next time.